Hello, hello, hello from San Diego. It's very hot here. It's like Las Vegas. It's miserable. Welcome to all my new subscribers. All 540 of my new subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've never had 540 subscribers in one month. I don't, I told my son, it, it's really kind of strange because I don't know why <laughs> it's the same old me, you know? So you see my lovely plants? That's all that's left of my garden, you guys. Everything died except for the cactus and I thought, why fight nature? Just grow cactus. So I pulled this little guy up. They sprout all over the place. I pulled this guy up and I bought this one. Lots of uh, plants, um, they uh, sprout up and you just pull them up and you know, then you got plants. Well, it was reported that people were having dreams and an asteroid was supposed to strike LA yesterday. And the day before that, it was supposed to be a giant earthquake. And you see, I'm still here. And I was thinking about these, this issue of the asteroids. If an asteroid was really gonna strike us, it would probably hit the ocean because there's more area of the ocean than uh, Earth. So I came up with some predictions that did not come true. All right, here's some predictions. The U.S. may warm six degrees from 1990 to 2020. I think that may have happened here in San Diego. Okay, two. Oil will run out by 2020. I think we still have it. By 2020, no glaciers will be left on Mount Kilimanjaro. Number four, a billion people will starve doing, due to the tech revolution. Number five, in 2020, a million people will die from climate change. Okay, now I have a few more. So these predictions that don't pan out are not uncommon. Get ready, these are wild. Life expectancy shall rise to 100. Um, actually, we can get pretty close if the conditions are right. Number two, computers will be invisible. Number three, books will be dead. I was just walking by the bookstore, it looks alive. Your every move will be tracked. The world's population will meet eight billion. I think, I think China has eight billion or more. Number six, China will be the largest economy. Number seven, self-driving self cars. Number eight, retire at 70, provided you can find a job. Number nine, Americans will vote electronically from home. And 10, China will be on the path to democracy. It hasn't happened yet. Okay, let me show you my little crafts. I've been doing crafts, yes, this is, these are so much work. Fortunately, it's just going to be a little blanket. So that's what I have been doing. Okay, so now I want to make myself a veggie sandwich, but I want to make my veggie sandwich using some flatbreads. Ma making some flatbreads. For one thing, if you have flatbread, if you have a good flatbread recipe, you're not going to run out of Every time I see a speck, I'm paranoid because of the plants. They were outside. So here's the, here's the flatbread. And the thing about the flatbread is 
before you roll it out and uh, fry it, you have to let it set for about 10 minutes. Let me roll it out real quick and then I'll give you the recipe. This is going to make a really good veggie sandwich. Uh, you can put meat in these as well. You can put anything you want. So this is a half a batch. And I have found, I have found that I have better control if my breads are small. So I think I'm going to make four. I think four is... I think four would be good. These are a lot cheaper than pita breads, you guys. If you're if you've bought pita breads, these are cheaper. And uh, you know, this way, and they're good. They're good if you have soup to go with these. Oh my, and another thing is, you have to be kind of careful because if, if the heat is too high, it, it really kind of messes your bread up. I use biscuit mix to make these too, but why? Well, you can make your own flat bread so cheap. Why use your biscuit mix? So I've been a busy bee, you guys. Uh-oh, some of my dough got dried out. Uh, I'm working on my uh, eBay and my um, resale shop. And I'm also working on the food storage, you know, trying to get control of it. And it's not, it's not been gotten control of, not even. We're going to talk about the food pantries and food in a minute, as soon as I get these flatbreads going. Because these, the flatbreads were kind of brought on by this uh, food stuff, by something. You don't need, you know what would be really good for these? Uh, a grill. Um, you can buy a nice little grill for about $20. I'm going to be investing in a nice little grill pretty soon. Uh, you can make them a little thinner on the thin side or a little on the thick side. Depends what you like, you know. So the little ones, if you make them kind of small, they're easier to control. And another thing about these homemade flatbreads, they're really good left over. Really, really good. Okay, now let me give you the flatbread recipe. Just mix everything up and then let it set for about 10 minutes before you fry them. And how you can test them is you can take a little piece of dough so you don't mess them. See, my oil's not ready. You wouldn't want to fry them. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about today. I was shopping around and I made myself some uh, chai tea. I didn't take it out of the micro oh, microwave either. I made four cups. But I made this cup a little bit stronger because I want to make some uh, nice, you know how, okay, now my, my uh, dough is, my oil's ready. predictions that did not come true. Now, I want to talk to you guys about Generation X, the Millennials, and the, the Founding Fathers, in particular George Washington, and this has to do with um, America. My oil seems to be good. It's not too hot and it's you know, not too cold. Okay, Generation X. I'm getting flour on my crafts. 
Generation X was born in 1993 to 2007. Uh, Generation X is really the, one of the most um, interesting generations because they're the technological uh, generation. They've been raised with uh, computers. Um, they are ethn ethn ethnically diverse, tolerant, socially and environmentally aware, and the social media influences their buying. Also, it has been postulated that Generation X will be more comfy with robots. Uh, also, autonomous technology, so they can work by themselves just fine. Um, and they are attracted to brands better for the environment and, and health. Also, they are very um, comfortable with mobile, mobile platforms and it says they have a very short attention span of eight seconds and i can kind of see that because like when you're on a, your computer if something is a bore you just flip off of it so they have to be engaged otherwise forget it you won't be able to sell them all those environmentally and healthy products now of all the um generations I can't say they're more interesting than uh, Generation Z or X. What is it? Generation Z. Because why? This is the last generation? <laughs> People are very worried that this is the end of times. I don't think so. I think we're just in a transitional phase, you know, which is, as always, cut. People hate change. This pandemic has been a pain. Okay, the Millennials are very interesting. Millennials were born from 1980 to 2000, 2020, 2000. Now the interesting thing is Generation Z and the Millennials could actually have the same parents and this plays into a very interesting fact. Okay, um, the Millennials make up one half of the American workforce and two thirds of the employee base. Um, they're um, planning for a future that has rebounded and they're calling that the Great Recession. You know, the, the real estate recession. Strongly possible some of their parents could have lost everything. Um, in our own family, we had a loss of equity, like one half. Of course, you know, San Diego is always weird. San Diego is very expensive, to say the least. So my flatbreads are looking good. Now, for my tea. Oh, I didn't get a spoon. Okay, so now, today, I was shopping around. I had to go down to uh, El Cajon City. And when I was down there, I went to Dollar Tree, and I bought vanilla chai tea. For This stuff's good. But this stuff is even better with hazelnut coffee cream. So um, people are very attracted to um, like uh, iced coffees and they're very expensive. Um, one generation that has been very attracted to the iced coffees is the millennials. Yes. They like to drink coffee while they're working So a lot of people are saying, wow, you know, this whole generation has been disadvantaged. I don't think so. I think they're just so, okay, so what I want to do is I want to add probably about a, what I do with that little thing? Probably about a tablespoon of this, but the best way is just to taste it. That's one teaspoon. So I have chai tea and I have uh, this uh, hazelnut coffee creamer. Uh, actually, that's good. I thought it was going to need more. So now to make this iced tea, I'm going to add ice. You don't have to. It's really delicious. But uh, ice is good too for a nice refreshing food. For a nice 
that bird of paradise, that little plant there has stuck me so many times. All right, now, these flatbreads are delicious if you've never tried this. Uh, you guys, I wanted to mention something to you. I couldn't find my own flatbread recipe. So I just Google, I just went under Safari and I put Rota Stone flatbread and up came all the videos I had done. So if there's a recipe that you know I've done and you can't find it, just do a search and it comes right up. YouTube has been nice to me recently. Not always. Sometimes they hate me. And they take away all of my followers. Okay, so back to the millennials. So, so the millennials were um, influenced by the, um, the Great Recession, followed by the Great Depression. <laughs> But that was traumatizing when you're about to lose your house. And in many cases, they may, their parents may have. They view the world as more vi volatile and uncertain and complex. And in my opinion, they seem as younger people to dominate the um, social media, like YouTube. Now about George Washington. Okay. From the Revolutionary War was in 1775 to 1783. What happened is once the United States colonized, then the, the British had problems controlling the colonies. What the British wanted to do was make us repay the, the crown for its defense of the French and Indian Wars. It wasn't a totally um, illegitimate wanting us to do that, but there's another aspect of this that I think bearing in mind. Okay, like when you study history, they say, well, you know what has happened? Um, people were sent to America from debtor's prison. That may be true to some extent, but there's another aspect. Anyone that was pretty much deemed undesirable was probably sent to um, America. And so the, the thinking along those lines is when they did this was, well, some of these undesirables would um, survive. I'm sure a lot of them didn't. And uh, some of them wouldn't. So um, if you were deemed undesirable, you were sent to America. So there's, you know, the Americans have always been uh, this way. And so what happened was there was, should have been no way for George Washington to uh, defeat the British, but he outmaneuvered them. Uh, evidently, uh, George Washington was, well, not evidently, well, George Washington was a genius, basically. Especially like a military genius for that time. So from our inception, we have had a population that was considered somewhat, you know, undesirable debtors, undesirable shipped to America to colonize it. Uh, pretty much for the benefit of the crown, not so much for the benefit of the people, you know, that were sent here to colonize, actually. So I, ha I bought this avocado yesterday. Boy, I'm sure glad. Now this goes down to the millennials, and we'll get to that in a minute. So I have some, some salt and pepper. I'm not supposed to be eating salt. But I am going to eat some because I want to make like a homemade veggie sandwich. So now 
well, you know, people are going, well, you know, well, basically, uh, these, these younger people are um, pretty much disadvantaged, right? Well, I don't know if you have noticed this, and it really cracks me up. The millennials, in some instances, are taking advantage of the food bank. Yes. They're going to the food bank. They're getting food so they don't have to buy groceries. They're into the minimalist lifestyle. And, you know, they're doing all this cheap stuff. And they're being kind of smart about it, actually. And they're driving pretty nice cars. But... Like, they're kind of a sneaky generation in a way, you know? So by being super thrifty, I have some green yellows. By being super thrifty, like conserving all their money, then they're getting like a cheap lease, and they're doing all kinds of things to better themselves economically that in the past I don't think you would ever see. And, and they have no shame either, which really cracks me up. And they're on, on the social... <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to go on. We'll have to see about this. So they're, they're like... Possible they don't have any money, don't have any jobs. But they're going to the food pantries and the food um, banks. And what they're doing is they're being super, super thrifty. And they're saving all of their money, you know, to like buy houses and real estate. And, you know, they're just, in a way, they're just being really, really smart about things. Which I think is pretty, says a lot. You know, like, um, so these young people, I mean, I have seen them in New York City you know, doing the dumpster diving thing. You may have, I love the videos, they're very entertaining. So I wanna make some um, meatballs, so I needed some cheese, so I got the Walmart. Uh, I wanted to get slices, but all they had was Tillamook, and that was uh, like four bucks, and I go, forget it. So I go, this will be good, the Fiesta Blend. And I will have a little, a little lettuce. So basically these are like vegetarian type little veggie sandwiches uh, because I was researching and, and it's easier on your kidneys. As you get older, you know, it's easier on your kidneys if you, uh, and then I have some balsamic vinegar. Okay, so let me show you. So here's my little uh, flatbread sandwich. Now this is pretty cheap because I bought these avocados for 68 cents and this is half. Uh, I'll take the lettuce off so you can see it better. Yummy. Good. No running out of bread. Okay, so the ones that are being super, super thrifty are buying their clothes and everything they can at thrift stores. And they're only buying what they absolutely and positively need. They also have eBay and Poshmark businesses and they're doing very well. Some of them are making six figures. Okay, they're doing all kinds of cheap things like donating blood and plasma. And you might think nobody is doing that. Yeah, they are doing that. I am highly suspicious that they're doing this kind of stuff habitually. 
And so what they're doing is they're spending very little money and they're saving up, these are the millennials, to buy uh, income property and homes. In the meantime, they're being very, very cheap and I think it's very smart. They're living in garages. A lot of times when they do videos, they say, I'm in my garage. They live in the garage and they rent the house. You know, oh, Rhoda, yes. They're living in vans and working and saving their money. Okay, a lot of them are vegetarians. Because why? Well, because vegetarianism is cheaper. Somewhere along the lines, they have learned if you are very, very cheap, your money is going to accumulate faster. Okay, they're planting gardens. Um, they're creating co-ops amongst their friends. So they're getting like-minded friends, like they're doing the dumpster diving together. They're going to the food bank together. They're getting as much free stuff as they possibly can. Um, and they're teaming up and sharing dwellings. Okay, now, some of them are leasing cars because you can get a pretty nice car for a very uh, low lease. So now, if you're being very, very cheap in everything you do, and you're not having to buy food because you're getting it at the food pantry, Not all of them, but I do believe there is an aspect of this. Some of them are, are riding bikes, motorcycles, taking transit, and walking. Okay, they're finding ingenious ways to earn money like pet walking and house setting, and they're doing the car and van living at the beach. I mean, if you want to be at the beach all the time, what a better way to do it than live in a van? I could see myself having done that when I was younger. Uh, when I was younger though, I didn't think of it. I, I thought of working all the time in the beauty shop. But you can work all the time and live in your van. Okay. And they're doing seasonal work. Like, you know, they're providing labor and they're getting food and lodging or, you know, they're living in their vans, and they have videos on uh, YouTube, and I watch them, and it's very fascinating, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Okay, so now, I want to talk to you guys about food the millennials are attracted to. They are very attracted to bagels, and they buy the bagels, and you know, um... They get free samples, like at Costco, and then the Costco food is very cheap. I'm not saying all of them, but there is a lot of them. Okay, and because they're hoarding their money because they've seen their parents lose their houses and they're determined to get real estate and they're determined to prosper. And, and they're pretty successful too. So at Costco, you can get pizza cheap, hot dogs, and with the hot dogs and pizza, I think you get a free drink and there's refills. They're baking bread, they're cooking by the week. You know, they cook a lot and then, you know, they eat it for a week. Uh, they're making bean burgers and they love Starbucks, uh, which is understandable. And they're working at Starbucks because at Starbucks pays pretty good and it's a good side hustle. And In-N-Out Burger uh, promotes from within and Del Taco. And they're selling all kinds of things online, like uh, mentoring, Kate, mentoring jobs. Um, you know, you can have access to their splendid life of uh, vacationing and such, or you can enjoy you can enjoy the benefit of their their vast knowledge. And they purchase a lot of things on eBay, and then they resell it for more money. So from your own home, you shop on eBay and you purchase stuff and you uh, sell it. In fact, I've had a few of these people, which is fine. 
And they're also getting uh, merchandise from um, from like discount vendors and then selling that online. They're cooking in crock pots, like to be efficient, like meat and vegetables. Another thing they're doing is like when they live in their vans, they tend to mooch off their friends with dwellings and you know their friends like them and they feel sorry for them and you know give them meals and stuff, which I think is funny. Now, also, along with the vegetarianism and the simplicity and the minimalism of life, like for snacks and just for food, they're eating vegetables and fruit. And they're fluid in their thinking. They're adopting like ways, like the minimalism, I think you can pretty much say comes from the Asians. Uh, also India, Mexico, and Americana. You'll see that an influence that way. Okay, now. Now the thing about the millennials that's super interesting is most of them, have, a lot of them have been to college. So like when they're doing some of this stuff, they're being incredibly kind of really smart about it. One guy who has made an excess of a million dollars started when he was in college because one of the little keys on his computer broke and so he bought one you know, like three or four dollars online, and he said, "Hey, maybe there's a market for this," and there was. And he cut his uh, his competitors' prices, and he was on his way. And now he has like a million dollar online business. Um, okay, so now also a lot of them can provide tutoring. I have a couple more meals: chips, nachos. So you have chips with nacho cheese, chili with no beans. And you get a, I saw this guy eating nachos and he had so many nachos and I was walking and I mean, it was like this giant place of nachos. He was just enjoying the nachos, eating them one by one, but eating like enough nachos, like imagine an entire bag of nachos. Okay, meatballs and chicken fingers. Why do I say that? Because I see them at Target, and they and that's who they're um, targeting as the millennials. Grilled chicken burritos, pizzas, cheap pizzas like Little Caesars, and sandwiches like um, like Submarina, and you get the big ones. They're cheap. They're cheap that way, or you get the daily special. So now I saw another thing, and I saw this guy, and he was, it's like them, I'm living in my garage, and they are literally living in their garages with the houses they own, which is crazy. But then they got somebody else paying the mortgage. So I saw this guy online, and what he did is, like him and his friends went out and they collected cans, like $6. It didn't take them that long, like they drove around, and then, uh, you know, they took them out. They said they took themselves out to lunch. And I was thinking about this, and I said, no. They have been doing this for years. And these kind of people are not going to blow five bucks. They're going to save their five bucks, and then they're going to buy their leased car. So I had this brilliant idea. And so... I'm not, I'm not saving these, but I would if I was broke. So I went to the shopping mall. This is very unsanitary. And so I collected bottles and cans. So let's see how many I got. And I thought, okay, this is a long month. What if I was to do this till the end of the month? And then I'm not gonna be eating tuna with no crackers. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This was just on one lap. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight
my hands real fast. I'm going to keep track and then we'll see how many. I need 60 cans for three dollars. So we'll see how much I can come up with. Although I'm not doing it if somebody you know who's in need is collecting the cans. And I don't dig but if they're sitting there you know I take them out. So okay we mentioned some food that the millennials like. So now I thought about, well, what about some cheap ass old lady? What about some senior citizen? What about some baby boomers? We've been through a lot of stuff. We've been through the Vietnam War, yes. I remember when my husband and I were like millennials. So here's what I came up with. Peanut butter sandwiches, potted meat sandwiches, soup, grilled cheese, oatmeal, pancakes, jam, and eggs, eggs and toast, egg scrambles, or any kind of scrambles, sausage, potatoes, bacon, potatoes, eggs, vegetables, BLTs, tuna casseroles, salmon burgers, macaroni and cheese, veggie sandwich, but that's like a millennial vegetarian thing. Canned chicken salads, oyster stews and crackers. Um, I get oysters or clams and all I do is I just add them, I drain them and I add them to like evaporated milk with a little butter. Sometimes I add a little water and then I, um, I eat them with crackers or some kind of flatbread would be good. Bean and bacon, cornbread, bean burritos, rice pudding, tapioca, corn chowder, pea soup, uh, bacon or sausage gravy and bread or biscuits, green beans with bacon and cornbread, muffin tops, raisin bread. Uh, also, you can eat at the uh, senior at the Salvation Army. I think it's like three dollars, but if you can't afford it, uh, you can get for free. Restaurants with large meals and eat two days. Ham and eggs, beef stew. Uh, the other day I made like beef stew with hamburgers, uh, bread and milk, or bread. So I tear the bread up, I put milk and sugar, or I toast the bread with butter and I pour hot milk on it and I eat it. Zucchini bread, apple bread, banana bread, and raisin bread, turkey burgers, and hamburger scrambles. Uh, rice and potatoes. Okay, so now if you have peas and rice, that's very nutritious. And then if you add a little meat to it, that's going to make a really good scramble. Uh, there's also stir fries and um, and um, all vegetable stir fries. Chicken and dumplings or chicken and noodles. So now I want to show you, I bought a little food for the stockpile and I want to show you what I buy, bought, then this is it. I want to show you what I bought and I want to show you why I bought this stuff. Okay, I bought this because if you have tea, this is really black tea. And this is really good if you want to make uh, rice pudding. You boil your rice and you take the rice milk out, believe a little. Then you mix up one third cup of this um, coffee creamer with one cup hot water and you add that to your rice. And then if you want, you can add a little cinnamon and that makes a very good rice pudding. So, okay, so now uh, we'll start out with a uh, Dollar Tree. I bought two shelf stable milks because when I did the, um, the senior, um, food pantry that's what they gave me so what I'm trying to do is recreate uh, the food bank myself and I bought one uh, pancake mix you know so I can have pancakes and eggs or pancakes and sausage and this is a pretty big one and I saw a video and they said I really hate it 
but it's so cheap for a dollar and it's good on French toast. Then I bought two oils at Dollar Tree. I bought one lemon and one lime. So now this is like you don't want to run out of, of fruit at the end of the month. So then I bought uh, some grape jam. You can eat that on your pancakes and some strawberry jam because these are really nice big one pound, um, one pound um, jars. And I bought two oysters because I'm trying to buy a little meat. Um, mainly I just eat them like I told you. I make oyster or clam chowder. And then I bought this first aid kit. I thought this was really nice. And I thought, well, I'll put that in my purse with my hand sanitizer. So that's what I bought at Dollar Tree. I bought, I, I bought $16 worth of stuff. Um, I don't get to Dollar Tree as often because I, and the only time I go there is if I'm actually driving to a different city. So I thought, well, I'll see what they have. And if they have anything I like, then I will uh, get it. And then um, I was doing my walking, and they had um, these tangerines. There's got to be at least 20. And then these apples, and each of them were under $3. So if the only thing keeping me from starvation is a sandwich with a fruit, or a small vegetable, I want to buy fruit and vegetables. But if you go to the food pantries, a lot of times they get, give you um, fruit. I like Walmart because I don't find my stuff gets rotten. And then I bought one yellow cake mix and I bought one brownie mix to replace the one I used because yesterday I made the most delicious, here they are, yummiest, tastiest brownies. And what they were was these Walmart brownies. And I just put big dollops of peanut butter and then I swirled it around with a knife. Yummy, you gotta try, I'm gonna try to find one with a lot of peanut butter. Mm, they all have a lot of peanut butter, look at this. Yummy, 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 yummy. It's like a Reese's peanut butter um, brownie. Mmm. Mmm. Not good. Okay, and then I will be making some pineapple upside down cake because I have a lot of pineapple in my stock pile. I went to 99 cent only to get ice because it's just too hot. Oh, good, cream style corn. I need that and I couldn't find any, believe this or not. Three cans of dented cans, so 50 cents each and I make corn chowder out of that. If you want to know how I make it, just Google Rose Stone. I bought one can of sausage gravy mix so if I made my flatbreads I'd be good to go and then this is a nice big um, can of SpaghettiOs so basically this is food for a day right here so that's this is great so I want to encourage you guys to be thinking like generation I think uh, generation uh, Z is very fascinating on the computers you know they're like um, war games I want to play and I mean it just goes on and on and on and they have tons of energy and they're just taking it all in I, I think it's fascinating but then the Millennials are fascinating because they're just hoarding all their money from every corner you know a lot of people think oh America is finished we have not been finished since our inception so Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.